All right. So tonight's Ohio Cast podcast, we're going to be talking to actor, filmmaker, uh, Greg Marks. Greg, welcome to the Ohio Cast podcast. How are you doing out there in Tacoma, Washington? Man, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, first things first, love your shirt. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, I love that you're, you're, you're rocking, uh, you know, USA Wrestling. Um, I know that you, um, your background in wrestling, you, you wrestled in high school, correct? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. And uh, what high school did you go to? Where, where are you from? I went to Wilson High School in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, they call it Silas High School now. And that's actually where we're going to be filming uh, most of our scenes at. That's our main school for the for the movie. Okay, so for the folks who don't know, you know, you're you're an actor and a filmmaker, and um, the topic of wrestling. Um, you know, you, you said you wrestled in high school, and uh, you've been watching the uh, the thirteen movies of wrestling that that we've known, and you're going to make a film about the the sport of wrestling. Is that correct? That is correct, man. What is the uh, what's the storyline of what we're doing with this film about wrestling that you guys are going to do? And, and will it be Tacoma, Washington? Well, like, you know, for example, um, if you look at Vision Quest, that is set in Spokane, Washington. Will the setting actually be Tacoma, Washington? Yeah, we're going to have uh, Mount Tahoma High School is another school we're shooting at. Everything that I filmed, this is my fourth film, has been shot in Tacoma uh, because Tacoma, you know, we get the bad rap sometimes to Compton, you know, T-Town, but there's a lot of also great areas and great locations uh, for filming here. So I've always tried to stick with where I'm at. So if ever, anything ever happens big, it's like, man, Tacoma, man. So you're, Ray. You're Tacoma, you're, you're, um, you're right outside one of the most beautiful areas. Well, you're in the most beautiful area on earth, in my opinion, in the Pacific Northwest, but um, the Olympic Peninsula. Man. It, absolutely stunning place um my wife and i have a um it's probably about an hour from your house but we have a, a a massive picture that she took it's probably five feet by f five feet by four feet and it's in our dining room and it's mm. uh this place just south of port angeles called hurricane ridge yes yeah and um they have these beautiful wildflowers and the the olympic mountains are right there and uh, we have a yeah. really good picture of that. And that is, um, we have that. Um, it's a photograph that she, she had this uh, cheap camera. Uh -huh. that, uh, we're snapping photos with this $90 camera. And then I have a cool one after I did a cliff dive into Crater Lake. And I reached my arm up and snapped yeah. them. We also have that picture blown up. But I'm a huge fan of the Pacific Northwest and, and um, really love, obviously, getting out there. You know, I try and make it out every year. We did Mount yeah. St. Collins last year. Uh, my friend Scott Burnett and his son Gray, uh, wrestling guys. Mm -hmm. And by Mount St. Collins, it's my fifth time doing it. But I love getting over there. One of my nephews and I, we did all the, the foothills of the uh, uh, Rainier because we didn't want to pay for a guide yeah. and to, to climb it. But um, I love getting out there in the Pacific Northwest is, is a great place. To, but born and raised, um, your high school is going to be the filming location. What is the undertaking like, Greg? to get wrestlers involved to make a wrestling film? Um, I, I got very fortunate uh, because when I came up with the concept and the idea, um, I was at first I was trying to think like, okay, what actors would be good wrestlers, right? And I'm like, you know what? Every wrestling movie that I watched, I could kind of tell because I wrestled a little bit that it didn't look authentic. So I said, you know, I think I'm just gonna find wrestlers and turn them into actors. So that at least the realism of wrestling shows through because my main focus to um, this film is to highlight wrestling, what it takes, the mentality, the moves, maybe explain some moves a little bit, what's inside those guys' heads and when they're on the mat, because it's just a one person against another person. There's just so many facets uh, to wrestling. And as I began to do my research, I've been researching for about two years now. And um, I feel like I'm part of the wrestling family now because I've met all these wrestlers and like all my new friends are like wrestlers or involved in wrestling or coaches or parents of wrestlers. I mean, you can walk through a store and I'll have one of these shirts on or something and they'll say, oh, USA Wrestling? So do you, do you wrestle? You have a kid that wrestles? I said, no, I'm making a movie. And they're like, I've heard about that. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of exciting, you know. I love it. I love that, you know, you, uh, you dove right into it. And, um, 
getting into the community and, and, you know, kind of penetrating the community, I guess is what I would say. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tough community and people always want to know what your background is, right? That's a big, yeah. big part of it. Oh, what's your background? Did you wrestle? Did you wrestle in high school? You got kids that wrestle. Yeah. And it's kind of wild to see, man, that we have, um, you know, it's, it, it's a community that kind of looks out for itself, but it's also a community that tends to beat itself up a little bit too. Yeah. So it's a complex community, but why do you feel it's so important to be authentic with the sport of wrestling? And, you know, uh, when we're looking at cinema, theater, movies, and telling a story, why is it so important to you? Um, I think, so I want, this is a wrestling movie for wrestlers, right? And hopefully it entices other people to get interested in wrestling. So most of the wrestling movies that I watch, they're good. Majority of them are, are really good. Uh, but they don't highlight the wrestling as much as they highlight the story surrounding the wrestling. So I'm kind of doing the opposite. Probably about 50% of the film will be wrestling and in the wrestling mats or traveling to wrestling or things like that. The storyline, or excuse me, the stories are showed and short because I don't think we need to overemphasize what each character is going through because we've already stated that. So now let's get down to the wrestling. How does that play into their wrestling? What's going on in their life? How does that affect them? How does that drive them to, to in their wrestling matches? You know, you said something super interesting me to, you know, when we we're talking today, just now, even um, taking wrestlers and making them into actors, right? You, you talk about that. And that is something that all the other films have not done that. They've done the opposite. Obviously they've taken actors and tried to make actors into wrestlers. And like you said, you know, the community is very authentic and wrestlers are very authentic. Uh, the body kinetics of a lot of your wrestlers, very authentic. Um, it's really hard to take someone, example, Channing Tatum, I thought did a great job. Um, but taking him and making him look like a wrestler just wrestled for 2015, 2025. Right. He did a really good job with it. You know, he's trying to be Mark Schultz. And uh, <laughs> Ruffalo was uh, well, Dave Schultz. and. Yeah. You know, and that, that's the one that, you know, people are going to talk about the most if you want to talk wrestling movie. Called, obviously, the cult classic of, um, you know, Vision Quest, uh, where the wrestling obviously uh, isn't as good as the wrestling in, um, uh, you know, in Foxcatcher. So, uh, but why, why, why making wrestlers into actors? Why is that something that's, that would be important to you and, and to, to put on film? Uh, authenticity. So you, let's say you come to the movie theater, the movie's done, you come and you start watching it. I'm like, man, eh, the story was good, but the wrestling, I don't know, man, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? So what I've done is I'm working with Kirk Elliott, who's a technical supervisor, and Kevin Roberts, who's a stunt coordinator, and um, Jeffrey Kaler, who is also helping with the script technical parts. So I have three people that have wrestled. I mean, you got an Oregon State coach there. You got another, um, Kirk Elliott, his dad, his kids both are national champions. You know what I mean? And, and Jeff, Jeff Gaylor's son, Brandon. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's off the hook. So yeah. you have these people that are really good at wrestling. And you're going to see that when you see the film. Plus, a thing that I'm going to do, too, is I'm doing some shots that have never been done. I've looked them up. I've done my research. So I want to bring something totally new and hopefully uh, create a new cult classic, the, the go-to wrestling movie that everybody wants to see. And that is really good story-wise, wrestling-wise, and cinematically-wise. I love it. I mean, you, you know, when, when we talked today earlier, I it just, it, you had me fired up. And I remember, and, you know, just thinking to myself, man, he's really, he's getting involved with the right people. Um, how do you, how does this come across when you can get a Kevin Roberts or a, a Kaler or Elliot? How, how do you get these people involved? And, and, and is it, is it easy to call these guys cold Turkey or run into them at a tournament or wherever you met them? Was it easy to get involved with them? And how did you meet these three individuals? Yeah. So <laughs> this film is an organic film. I'll tell you that right now. So I went to a wrestling tournament. I believe it was in uh, Monroe. So I go to this room, Monroe and I see this guy and he has like a handlebar mustache. He's kind of buff. And I'm like, like he might be good in the movie. So I went over and started talking to him and his friend, Patrick Gannon, I liked him. Right. And I go, Hey, you know, I was talking to this friend about being in the movie. Then Patrick started talking and I was like, dude, I have a part for you. And the movie's like, Oh, come on, let's do it. He's like really hyped up. He plays Rocco. So he's kind of like the assistant coach that brings the comedy relief. 
And he was like, he was like acting in front of me, like, I'll do it right now. What do you want me to do? Oh, I'm intense. I go, hey man, hey man, you're scaring me. It's okay. I said, you got the part. You got the part. He goes, dude, you need to meet my friend Kevin Roberts. I'm like, okay, sure. So he hooked me up with Kevin. And then when I met Kevin, it was like a whole nother ball game, you know, because he started talking and telling me all these different things. And I was like, dude, you got to be in it because it just, you know, Kevin, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he has a, this look about him, like of wisdom. And he has like that cleft chin and, and he's just, he's just the guy. He was right for the part. I'm glad I met him. He plays Joe who works in a linen facility who actually trains uh, uh, Wes. So I don't want to give too much of the story away, but so then I started talking to him and then my professor from college, I mentioned to him about wrestling. He goes, I know this guy named Kurt. You might want to talk to him. He's really involved in wrestling. I'm like, okay, I meet Kurt. And then next thing you know, he's the technical supervisor. He's like a real straightforward by the numbers. I mean, technical as you can get. He knows like all the rules and he knows a lot of people. So then I start meeting all these people and then, <laughs> and then uh, Kevin goes, uh, yeah, I'm buddies with Chell Sonnen. I go, okay, who's that? He's like, you don't know Chell Sonnen? I'm like, no. So he introduced me to him. And then all of a sudden I looked him up. I'm like, holy smokes, this guy's a beast. And I ended up getting to talk to him. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm like, what? So everything's been organic. I, you know, and, and it's it, it's something where the community really wants stories told about the sport. Um, but I don't know how seriously they take a lot of the movies that you're, you know, that we've talked about because you got to be a little different to wrestle. And I, I'm and I know, you yeah. know, that from wrestling, but now looking at these high level competitors and just describing you met the guy you met with the hand of our mustache yeah. hyped and, and jacked up. Um, that's wrestling, right? Like it is a, it's a very authentic community. And Hey, I'll tell you what, the, People know right away, they usually have a pretty good idea if you're not out for the betterment of the sport. Have right. you run into any of that where people have been like, what are you going to do for the sport? How are you? Have you run into any of that? any resistance, I guess? Have you run into any of that? Not really. You know, I, like I said, I've been really fortunate and I'm passionate about what I'm, what I'm doing. And I've been researching it for two years. So if you start talking about certain things about wrestling or about film, I, I, I'm very knowledgeable on it. I'm wrestling not as much. I'm getting more knowledgeable on it. But I, the wrestling community has literally opened their arms to me, you know, because I just kept going to these tournaments. And when I go to the tournaments, I have this notepad. Actually, I can lose my notepad. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just got all these notes. And I stuff. just saw I, athlete PE teacher. <laughs> Star yeah. athlete PE teacher. Yeah, it has all the movies and the people I met and met and trying to do stuff. And I have drawings in here. So what I do is I go to these tournaments and I would draw and I would just watch people and listen, you know, and if I didn't know something, I would ask somebody else. You know, uh, one of the one of the things that I learned was it kept saying, climb the rope, climb the rope, climb the rope. I'm like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going up the arm. I go, oh, that makes sense. You know, you hear a lot of circle, circle. Up the body up their arm yeah 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 so i'm hearing all this stuff and i'm like man this is a great way to actually learn it and feel it so that when i'm filming um i know what's going on but i've, I've just learned so much in in doing that and it's just been eye-opening and everybody's been really kind. even usa wrestling um has really been good to me too with you know because you can't just go on the floor and and just start taking pictures and talking to people so i went through the process uh, becoming a member, uh, taking all my tests, background check and everything. And now I'm going to Fargo, you know, and I would have never, ever in my life said, yeah, I'm going to Fargo. My friend's like, what are you going to Fargo for? I go, wrestling tournament. Oh, I should have known, <laughs> you know. Uh, listen, so I did, I was in Fargo and competed as an athlete when I was in high school in the, uh, you know, 1996 and 1997. And it's in the same venue, the Fargo Dome. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's crazy because, um, my, when my brother did it, he was in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Uh, another time they had it, in like I want to say like Lincoln, Nebraska. It's usually in the center of the country. Okay. They're trying to bring everybody all together and be a central location. And a lot of the times the NCAA tournament is in St. Louis, center of the country, you know. Okay. And so they do, the, they, they try and do things. Um, wrestling tries to do things that make sense. Wrestling will also do things that, you'll wonder to yourself, how, why can't wrestling get out of its own way? 
Yeah. And you're going to find that out. I mean, you know, and that, that would be my thing is, you know, I'm not, I, I'm, uh, I'm fair to the community, but when I see things, you know, we're changing the rules of uh, college wrestling. I don't know if you know that. The no, take, that's awesome take stuff. Three points and they're doing all these other different technical things with that I don't think you need to do. And that would be a, a, a wrestling uh, can't get out of its way moment for me, at least. Yeah. But you're figuring this out. And um, I believe the story, I, I, you have to correct me if I'm wrong, is this is a high school story that's going to be yes. told. Yes. I don't want to give too much away from what I understood and, and, and what you told me. So if I periodically ask you, can we, can we talk about that? Not talk about, yeah. I want to know, right? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. I think that that that's important to, uh, we want people to go watch the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. casting, you know, you talk to me about casting and obviously we talk about the authenticity of wrestlers and having wrestlers play roles and Kevin Roberts has got the chiseled caveman, battle torn face he's got the bald spot right here and not from being do you know what that's from by the way does he tell you what that's from yet no no took a shot at the same time as one of his teammates they hit heads and he skinned that off are you serious that's what that's from. that is not he's not oh, bald God. there he still very much so has all of his hair yeah he took a shot and scrape that off. That's what wow. that's. Like. I'm gonna have to have him tell me that story then. Listen, but he, might he also wrestling. looks like he's seen some stuff too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. As a he, he he's an authentic character, but the authenticity of it and and building the cast, right? You're from you know you you sent me the IMDb. That's what yes. that's the, when you give your credits as an actor. Right. Um, yeah. You've appeared in a lot. You know, you, you, you've been around there. You've been to Hollywood. You've, you've done a lot of things, obviously, in Tacoma, West Coast. Some, might, some people might even call it the left coast. I don't know if you know that. But, <laughs> but when we talk about this, right, like this is very much a Midwestern sport as far as, you know, the sport of wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, the greatest depictions of it, you know, obviously, uh, another one was a Pacific Northwest one with, with Vision Quest and Spokane. But um, it's a Midwest sport, but you're doing a really good job of casting West Coast people who are in the wrestling community. How was that come to be for you? And who's going to be like, who would you say is the main star, if you can share that with us? It's uh, Brandon Kaler. Brandon Kaler, All-American, uh, yeah. last year for the uh, Oregon Beavers. And um, uh, I actually did an interview with the guy who beat him, Eric Burnett, who beat him from Wisconsin. Uh -huh. We beat earlier in the tournament. To, to get where he was, to be an All-American. Yeah. Um, then the guy beat him for seventh and eighth. I but, heard about that. Yeah. So, yeah. great thing. But Brandon, who's an All-American, a bona fide, you know, he was a blue chipper coming out of high school. Um, you know, Russell for two different coaching staffs at Oregon State. Um, but, you know, he did the thing, right? He's an, he's an All-American. He's a D1 yeah. All-American. Him. How important was it to you to cast Brandon Kaler, All-American for Oregon State Beavers? Um. It was super important because I had been looking for West for a year and I talked to other wrestlers and met other, you know, cause everybody's trying to push their kid like, oh, well, you know, cause so spoiler, I'm the, I play the father, I play Brandon's father in the movie and his mother's Peruvian. So that's how we got that mixture. But everybody kept trying to push their, their kid on me. And I was like, you know, I, I would like to, but I really need to find the right person with the right cadence and the right attitude to play this role. So it took me a year. And this, this is a funny story. So that's how I met Jeff. I met Jeff at another tournament, Kaler. And he's like, oh yeah, you should talk to my son. I was like, okay. You know, I, I never take anything. I'm just like, okay. So then I see his son, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the guy, right? <laughs> and so we got connected and he agreed to do it. Um, yeah, it was just amazing. Um, but one thing I do want to point out too is, uh, if you notice in all of the wrestling movies, except for one, there's one that came out on Netflix that's fairly new. I think it's 2021 20, or 22 about a female wrestler, but it's based on a true story. But any of the other wrestling movies do not have a female wrestler. I do. Her name is Kamaya. I always pronounce her name weird because it's spelled weird. I wrote it down. Uh, Garolin, okay. Kamaya Garolin, and oh my gosh, this girl's a beast. And she's smart, and um, I wanted to highlight uh, girls wrestling as well as boys wrestling 
And so in the story, her problem is her dad doesn't like her wrestling. You know, I'll just leave it at that. So they have some problems and differences in that area. And she's trying to prove to him that, you know, I can wrestle too. She's wrestling on an all boys team because in her league, there's no other teams that have girls. If that makes sense. Following yeah. the rules. So we follow the rules because I can't really tell you, but that's the only way that something else can happen later on in the film, technically wise. Because what I'd hate to do is for someone to see this film and go, that would never happen. That's not how it works. You know what I mean? So, uh, but she's really good, man. And um, she's actually at a camp right now. Um, we're doing some posters. I'll share those with you later. We're doing uh, movie posters uh, for them as well. But um, you guys look her up. She's she's really good. She's really she's she'll be at Fargo too. I'm gonna watch her wrestle there. So when you're you know putting together a film like this, I don't know if people understand. There's a lot of moving parts. I mean, <laughs> a lot of moving parts when we're talking about production, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and like you're saying, this has been years in the making for you as far as being an observer. You know getting into the community, meeting people, introduced to the right people, finding the correct people, the correct, correct cast parts, you know, all the different staff, you know, there's so many moving parts to it. But when you look at it at the end of the day, how long does something like this take to, to shoot and when do you shoot it? And, and how does it all come together? Editing process, all these things that people just don't understand because I, you know, I've just been a part of like some of the flow films um, mm -hmm. and um, I've done interviews for there was a Terry Brands one. I've done interviews for stuff on Edinburgh and all these other, um, you know, division one programs. Um, you got to shoot a lot. Yeah. 12 minutes of edited down voiced over produced footage. Right. That's really hard to do. Then I'm that's just like when people are doing these docs, right? Like a documentary, yeah. you're not yeah. doing it, you're doing scripts, lines, production teams, stunts, yeah. film, the whole night editing. Mm -hmm. a, and I just that's just like me going off the top of my head, yeah, um, as a novice, right? As, as, a, as a layman, correct? Yeah, but what is this undertaking like for you? And what's the full thing? What will you have wrapped up into it at the end of the day when it's done and in the can produced? Uh, so hours wise or as far as people wise or give me all of it people what are so, the so from the start I had to come up with the concept then I had to write the script and then I had to rewrite the script then I had to rewrite the script then I had to rewrite the script <laughs> and then I go to my team because I've made films before so I use the same people now we're figuring out logistics because everybody that works for right now today films doesn't live in Tacoma so now we have to figure out logistics because this is my first feature. I have done uh, three shorts. I have two online and one that's in festivals right now. But so now we have to figure out logistics. We have to figure out how much money. We have to figure out, um, this will be my first Screen Actors Guild uh, SAG film. So it's union. You know, your insurance is over a million dollars. You know, you're raising money. You know, so we shoot everything that we shoot. We shoot on a red camera. You know what that is, right? I know what an uh, iPhone is and a Sony Handycam. <laughs> so educators, like, no, educators. Like, like a red camera is the real deal. It's like they shot the Transformers with the red camera. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So you're looking at all these factors and then, you know, I have to get hotels for people that are coming out of town. Um, we're also pitching to different people. So Josie Passett, I'm going to be meeting with her. And for those people that don't know that aren't in that age range, she's from Melrose Place. You know, um, we're trying to, uh, we're in talks with uh, uh, Sally Roberts because I want her to do a cameo because I'm trying to help uh, influence the uh, girls wrestling as well. Um, and like I said, Chell, that was, that was a blessing, you know, um, just trying to get all these things together. I basically, my life is work, then I come home and work some more on my film. And then in between that time, I spend time with my grandkids. <laughs> That's pretty much my life, man. That's you're pretty much my life. You're getting it. Yeah. Um, so how long will it actually take to shoot the production? How long will production of the movie actually take? So the we're looking at 10 days. That's really hard to do, uh, but I'm very organized. And I'll have a shot list. And we're going to do some pre-shooting. Uh, before we even start filming. So my camera guy lives in uh, Arizona, Scottsdale. 
So he's going to come down for a couple of days. We're going to go to all locations, maybe do some B-roll and uh, figure out, because I got, dude, I'm telling you, when you guys see these shots that I'm going to do, you've never seen it. I researched it. You've never seen the way that I'm going to film wrestling ever, ever, ever. You got yeah. me fucked up, man. You, yeah. And when you're you not going to have to sell me on the movie, Greg. I'm not the yeah. guy you're going to have to sell the movie to. Because yeah. I'm welcome to things that are trying to be authentic and obviously raise the profile of the sport of wrestling. Uh, you talked about the girls, right? Yes. Uh, why, why is the girls part of this so important to you? And it hasn't been important in the other double digit amount of films that we have uh, seen. Mm. Wrestling. Why, why was that something that struck a chord to you? So it's kind of personal. My uh, so my mother, um, she passed away obviously a while ago. Um, but I just, I don't know, man. It's kind of like an homage to my mom. She all kind of raised me right to respect women, and uh, women get, um, I think they get a bad rap a lot of times. And there's a lot of powerful women out there, a lot of smart women out there that can really influence the world. So. I think that it's important in making this movie that we're trying to change the game. So if you see for younger girls that see, you know, uh, Kamaya playing this role, it might inspire them to wrestle. You know, because she has a really good part, man. So um, I think that it's important that we understand um, the importance of girls wrestling and women in, as a whole in the world. You know what I mean? Like a true woman, if you know what I mean. So. It's important to me, man. It's really important to me. You know, I have a granddaughter. I have a daughter. You know, I just I have two sisters and I just see what they go through. And just I don't know. I just feel like it, it, now it's a good time to emphasize uh, women and girls wrestling. It just it just clicked for me. Listen, I have a wife and two kids. She gave birth to both of them. Uh, I'm pretty fired up about women as well. And uh, my mom gave birth to me. So I got a soft spot in my heart for women as well, man. I think that. Uh, you know, I was just at Final X in New Jersey, and that's where we we picked the United States World Team, and uh, picked our members. And there was some pretty impressive uh, wrestling out there. Uh, Adeline Gray was able yeah. to come back and knock off uh, Kennedy Blades, and I mean, it is just what we have in wrestling. No Helen Marulis. That was uh, a bummer for me. Helen's the first um, uh, Olympic gold medalist in a United States of America women's wrestling history. So yeah. you know, he's always um, someone who I look forward to watching perform. And she, she's just different, man. And I like people like that, that hopefully we can get the, their take on the, the, the film and, you know, I can kind of ask them what they think of it. Hopefully we can get them to yeah. watch it, you know, after it's done. Um, She just did a movie. Helen. Yeah. Helen believe with Chris Pratt. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I saw something about it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet either. Chris Pratt, Washington State Placer. Yep, that's right. Big inside trip guy. Did you know that? No. Big inside trip guy. That's his wow. deal. It's crazy, <laughs> right? Uh, what my kids call him, uh, Star Lord, I think his uh, name is. Yeah, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, whatever. Peter Quill. Peter Quill. <laughs> That's, just, that's the character's name, Peter Quill, Star Lord. Um, yeah. But state placer in uh, the state of uh, Washington, your your yep. state. Yep. Uh, so you know, ten days, man. That is that. That's a tight window. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be more. But as far as like all the big stuff, like the wrestling scenes, that all happens in the school. Like I said, most of the movie is at school, at practice. This, most of the majority stories at school, at practice. So we have the outside stories because I don't want to insult the intelligence of the viewer. We don't have to drag out that something happened and it's just chewing, you know, chewing it and we just keep going to that story. Let these guys wrestle and let's see what's going through their minds and how they're feeling and dealing with it and how it drives them too. Because a lot of them get driven from, um, you know, what's going on in their world. That's what drives them to wrestle. And that's what makes them good wrestlers so this is a silly question you're obviously going to have to have this at school when school's out yeah spring break 2024 it's already on the books okay so <laughs> i'm a high school teacher okay okay <laughs> 20th year up uh 
in education and uh you can do a lot at a school in a break time like what you're saying like you know we yeah. have the holiday break right christmas new year's mm-hmm. yeah, that's just a two-week break you could you could fit it in you could come to the misery of northeast ohio if you want to show people the tundra and the misery of a December. I'm just letting you know, okay? I can't offer okay. my school up, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> get a lot done in a, at, at a public school. I, it, it, is it at a public school? I shouldn't yes, assume. Sir. Yeah, yep. All yeah. Tacoma schools, man. And it's, the school school you went to. it's the high school you went to. Yes. I love it. And they gave me a school bus, man. No way. Yeah, you know you got to have the inspirational speech on the school bus. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know a guy. A wrestler, John Worthy, he owns a school bus line. He owns 20 school buses. His kid, uh-huh. my kid, his kid, my kid, play baseball together. He beat me at the high school state tournament when I was a sophomore in high school. Wow. Now we're neighbors. Now we're neighbors. Well, not neighbors. So neighbors. We live in the same township. Great guy. He wrestled at Ohio University. I wrestled at Kent State, but he owns he owns a bus line, just so you know. <laughs> but um Greg, you, you got me so fired up, man. You know what? Like, listen, I'm not going to be, I, I got I to gotta be totally honest with you. I've been looking at a Rainier beer up here uh-huh. for about the last three or four minutes. I've been looking up at this uh-huh. Rainier beer and I have an old case of it yeah, back in my closet. Are you guys the Tacoma Rainiers still? Yeah, let me show you something. Let me show you something. I love it. You You're breaking away. Me. I'm breaking away. You were showing me all your stuff. Hey. <laughs> yeah. There it yeah. Is. Hey, I got, right a here, man. I got a red. I have that red hat. I got like the dad. The yeah, I have that. What? I have that. I have that. I'll, I'll show you. I have that. I don't know if I have a. Tw- I have the blue one. I got the blue one with a red R on it. And it's yeah. got. On it. I just found that in my truck. Dope. I have that red one, but my red one fits like to the head, like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yours is more yeah. like more of a trucker. A trucker. Yeah. 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 I have a bunch of uh, Rainier's uh, hats. Wow. How'd you get those? Yeah. Um. Well, I bought it at a Mariners game. Oh, okay. I bought it at a Mariners game. Um, and obviously, as you can see, listen, man. When I get out there, I go off on these, and everybody makes fun of me. I really, really? Like, garbage. You can't believe you like that. Hey, look, look, look. That guy's wow. guy still in there, bro. Come on yeah. now. Hey, do you remember the old Rainier beer commercials? Rainier beer. Yeah. Dude, I have the openers. Uh, what? I have the, the running one. You know the running thing? Yeah. Yeah. I have the mug with the legs. My mom was drinking out of it this last weekend. <laughs> That's so funny, man. I have it. I got it on. No. You got more stuff than I got, man. I'm a big fan. I mean, that area is near and dear to me. Like I told you, I got married out there. I'm still looking because I have tons of it in yeah. my like, nostalgia. I have another Rainier can up there. I have the yeah. case. I have the actual box case of beer. And um, I love it. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I showed you. Uh, you know what? I love nostalgia so much. I just got to show you this one. We got a Jim Brown who just passed away. Jim Brown. One of the best ever. Rest in peace. And then obviously, Barry Sanders. Man, he was cold, wasn't he? Yeah, Barry yeah. Sanders. Hey, Burroughs, Jordan Burroughs. Yes. And we I got, uh, what else we got? We got, uh, got Kyle Snyder. Dang. Yeah. And then of course we got sweetness. Oh, not sweetness. We got sweetness, but man, you got some serious stuff there, man. I do yes, listen, I got some stuff. Oh, I got a I'm looking, I got a uh I got a uh what's that mug? That mug I have there is a uh uh Glacier National Park. Wow. Well, if you've been to Glacier, Glacier's not too far from you. Gla- you could be yeah. in Glacier, I think like seven hours probably. Yeah, I haven't been there. I heard. Um, did you do okay? So you know you're saying you're going around to all these tournaments, experience it. Um, the state tournament in Washington's at the Tacoma Dome, correct? Yes, I missed that. So you missed that. Yeah. I was actually going to get to it. Um, is there wiggle room 
if you go to the Washington State tournament, that'll be a February event, I believe. Is there wiggle room between there and March? To, you can't, a rewrite would be hard, right? Or an addition would be hard, no. right? No, uh, I'm a very intuitive writer. So I didn't go to school for it. A, a funny story. So before I started acting and making films, I was an extra on television shows. And it was like 78 bucks a day. And I would go there. And my purpose for being there was to learn how to make films. How do they do it? So I was basically in school all those, you know, hundred and something times I've been on set just watching. <laughs> and that's how I learned how to make films. So I'm intuitive. I don't I haven't had any class. I didn't even have acting classes. I learned on YouTube, <laughs> you know, and I was getting all these parts and stuff. But um, that's the same thing with this script. It's so organic. Even meeting you, this is all organic, right? Because, you know, now I, I meet you and I talk to you. I go, hey, man, I need a commentator, a color commentator, right? <laughs> so that's why I'm sitting there asking you, you know, you'll be here, man, because you got to be on set, man. You got to be on set, bro. But I told you I got a face made for radio. No, no. 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 yeah but see how can you how can you look bad sitting next to chael sonnen wow that that would actually make me look worse i think so <laughs> no. um, tell me a little bit about your other you said you have some shorts what are the name of your shorts and when when we talk about a short i don't know if people know but what is a short film or a short what's a short what constitutes a short and what happens between the jump from a short to a full length feature? Um, so a short film is usually, it can be anywhere from five minutes to about 45 minutes. You're kind of pushing it at 45 minutes. Um, a regular feature film is 90 minutes. So that's the difference there. A uh, short film, uh, you have to cram a lot of information into a short amount of time to make a good film to get your point across because you only have so much time because a lot of the competitions um, if you have a longer short film, there's a possibility that you won't make it in a festival because it's too long and it's too drawn out. So the more information you can cram into it, the better. So with me, it was getting to the point where I couldn't tell stories like I wanted to tell them because I didn't have enough time or money. So I said after this last one that I just did, I put like $36,000 of my own money into it to get it done and get it finished. That, it's not even out yet. It's in the in festival in uh, put in festivals. I haven't made it to a festival yet, but they're in fe you know um, waiting to see. You know, June first will be the first one, or July first will be the first one. We'll see if I get in there. But it's it's uh, I couldn't write short films anymore. You know, I have all these ideas, and I have another script that I've already written that's a full feature film too. And I just you know we talked about construction and asphalt and all that kind of stuff, and I just don't want to do that anymore. You know, I'm 56 years old, man. I want to do what I enjoy and what I'm passionate about. And that's, um, you know, people ask me, you know, you're going to be famous or I say, I'm not trying to be famous. You know, I'm trying to be relevant. So if I'm relevant, everything else will come. But I want to make sure that my films impact people in such a way that it creates change and influences people to be better people. That's my goal. That's my payoff. When we talk about this, Obviously, financing becomes a big part of it. Bringing people out becomes a big part of it. Paying people, all these different things. And now you're saying you're involved. It's a Screen Actors Guild, so it's unionized, right? Yeah. That really changes everything. Um, when you're making, then once again, it's a big part of making the jump from a, a short to a full length feature. Um, talk about that, and talk about financing, and what you do, and how you raise funds, and what who you deal with, and and how you get the right people and the, and the moving parts for that part. So uh, first we come up with a budget uh, based on the script. Um, an ultra low budget is $500,000, um, which we're below ultra budget. So we're ultra, ultra low budget, which is about 300,000. Um, we've raised 70,000 of it already. And we're, we have, um, I like to call them stakeholders because I don't, I don't believe that they're like investing, even though they can get money back on it, but you're taking a stake in what I'm taking a stake in. Um, so I like to call them stakeholders. Um, what we're going to actually do is something a little different. We're going to gather all the stakeholders together. We're going to have a table read. Do you know what that is? Yes. Yeah. So we'll have a table read and we'll let them decide if they want to invest in the story or not or take a stake in it. So that's part of that. 
Um, I'm not really worried about um, raising the money like I was before when I was doing the short films because I've met so many people that are interested and they're interested in the story and a lot of them have wrestling backgrounds. So it's, it's, it's helped me a lot to be able to do what I needed to do to uh, get to where, where I want to be. I just love your confidence in the, in your, your process and in, in getting people on board and getting people involved because you're so confident in your ability to tell the story that wrestlers want it told how they want it told. And like you talked about with the, the camera angles is what you really got me with. You got me with, I can tell you how I felt in college a lot of the time in the college room. I could take a GoPro and throw it in the dryer. And that's how I felt a lot of the time, you know, <laughs> right? That's how I felt, man. I'll tell you what, or go take a GoPro and throw it down Hurricane Ridge. I felt like that. I'm not going to lie to you. It felt yeah. like I, I was I was uh, a brick in a dryer or a GoPro down Hurricane Ridge and uh, just uh, south of Port Angeles, right? That's what mm -hmm. I felt like, right? So you got me really interested in this camera angle that you're and i don't want you to give it away no i can tell you off camera away <laughs> i'll tell you off camera uh, you can tell me but i'm really super excited about that and um man i have a question do you try and continue to go after um obviously uh it just showed you kyle snyder and uh yeah. George, right um you know obviously those guys are huge pillars of our sport the faces of um you know, USA wrestling. Um, do you go and get people like that or try and, and grab the attention of people like that? And then, you know, we've got old wrestlers. We've got, you know, one of the greatest ever do it. You know, we got we have guys like Kenny Monday. You know, we have all these different, the Brands brothers, Kale Sanderson. Do you try and go after some of the all-time greats or, or are you good and secure with where you are with the, the cast and the stakeholders? Yeah. No, well, there's still lots of parts to be filled. But here's the cool thing. Everything that has happened thus far, even meeting you, has been organic. I haven't reached for anything or I haven't had to work really hard to meet certain people. That's all been presented to me. And then I just tell them what I'm doing and they became interested. You know, not just because of my merit, because of the people that introduced me to them's merit. So I haven't really had, because I don't really know all these wrestlers and all these different things you know, until someone tells me and I just, I just, you know, tell them what I'm doing. And when I tell them all, here's the, here's the main thing and my main focus, I'm setting out to try to make the best wrestling movie that has ever been made in history. I'm trying to make history. So if somebody wants to help me make history, then come on board. Cause I'm not going to say no, you know what I mean? Whether it's helping me out with the storyline or something doesn't look authentic or these type of clothes look better, or they wouldn't do that. I'm not, I'm not so full of myself that I'm not listening. You know, I'm a very uh, good listener and I take everything in because I know at the end of the day, ultimately it's my decision of what happens, but that doesn't mean that I can't absorb from other people because that's only gonna make the movie better. I call this a community film, a wrestling community film. So I don't, I don't feel like I have to really, you know, look for people like that because I keep getting even like you man I just got introduced to you what <laughs> you know what I mean and now we're sitting here talking you know yeah I mean so that's how it's been happening it's been all organic man so I feel like it's meant to be it's time I don't know if Hollywood's very organic like that they're not not I think it's very very much so planned out by the powers that be and obviously who you know your last name um i don't want to know yeah, if I, I want to go as full on to say nepotism but um, you know i mean hollywood's it is what it is right yeah yeah i, I don't get super pumped about much out of hollywood i'm not gonna lie to you yeah I, I you know occasionally like a top gun type thing the top gun thing was that was good though I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I enjoyed that. I mean, and then obviously the classics. I still really enjoy the. Uh, I'm a big fan of like the original Godfather. Yes. I watched the uh, um, the Indiana Jones stuff with my kids, and now they're there's like, Dad, Dad, there's a new one coming out. How yeah. old? 
how old is he now? And I'm like, at some point you might have to just let the franchise go or hand it off. They said it's his best performance though that he's done in, in his so. thing, man. I'm kind of fired up because I man, I love the first two. And I love obviously um if you look at like the original Rocky, like how yeah. authentic the man. original is, it's really good, man. So it's, think of it. That's what we're doing right now. This is the original movie. You know what I'm saying? The concept, everything. First movie to have a a, a girl in it in the story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you know when the first wrestling movie was made? Greg, I know you do because this is your job. <laughs> but no, I don't answer your question. 1978. What was it? It was called, uh, let's see, I got it right here. Uh, Legendary. No, not Legendary because that has uh, Santa, John Santa in it. Uh, Takedown, Lorenzo Lamos. Really? Yes. How was it? What? It was actually a good movie. Yeah? I'm surprised that nobody talks about that. What's it called again? Um, uh, takedown. 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 Nineteen seventy-eight. Hey, listen. I I don't want to. I I don't like to go down the the. I like to. I like to take the high road. I like to <laughs> stay on the high road. But did you get? Did you get to watch one more shot? One more. No, that's now. Is that fictional? I I think he yes. He rustles a bear in it. One more shot. Really? Hold on. I'm gonna watch this tonight. I'm gonna watch it tonight. Hold on. Listen, Are you serious? HS, one of my teammates had in college. Hold on. I one think he was shot. up here. Hold on. One more shot wrestling movie. It just came up. Um it is yes. Here it is. <laughs> here it is. Mind? Here it is. You got look, look at me. What year is that? 80s? Uh, 96. Really? Yes. Because I said, you know, you when you said to me, you said you've watched these 13 films. Um, You might, if you get the VHS for it, you might fly to Cleveland, rent a car, drive to my house and beat me with the VHS now that I've turned you on it. <laughs> I want to apologize in advance. Was it good though, or no? I'm normally, I'm normally a high road guy. Yeah. I'm not really taking it on one more shot. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was not super stoked about it. It, it was not. It's the opposite of what you're trying to do. How about that? <laughs> okay. How about that? Um, yeah. Oh, I hope, I hope, and I. You've said it multiple times. I'm trying to make the best, most yeah. authentic wrestling movie of all time, and I appreciate that. Um, how do I? How do I, I know how I, I know how I can be a, a commentator, but how does somebody in the Tacoma area or a wrestling fan become an extra on the film if they wanted to be? So uh, probably about a month before we're going to have um, open auditions for some of the parts. And we'll also, uh, by that point, I'll probably have some news, be on the news and be in some newspapers and different articles. Uh, a couple magazines. I mean, I, this is not my first time like marketing for this kind of stuff. And this is just so big. And by the time we get done with it, I mean, I've already passed out over 200 business cards. You know, I have to order some more for Fargo. I mean, it's just anybody and everybody that's interested in wrestling gets a card and I take time and talk to him, explain to what I'm doing. So it's kind of like a presidential campaign. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm just talking to, I'm talking to everybody, you know, because I want everybody to know about this. Uh, but what we're going to do that's cool is when we have um, all of our extras for the big, big scene, we'll probably need about 100 to 150 extras. We're going to have a raffle. We're going to give away like PlayStations, televisions, and stuff like that. Okay. I like it. You're making an event out of it. I like it when you make yeah. an event out of things. Um, when we talk about a release of something like this, is that something that's just even too far to talk about? No. <laughs> Not at all. So what I no, I do. I got the whole plan. I've been doing this for two years. So I'm not going to sell the film. I'm going to uh, do my own distribution, and I'm going to map out. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to drive across the country from theater to theater to theater to theater, and so on, and market this to the wrestling community. So because if you get a distributor, they take thirty percent of the money. Wow. Yeah, and what I want to do, depending on how much it makes, I want to be able to pay 
the people that helped me get here. You know what I mean? So um, I'm willing to quit my job and drive across the country and self-distribute. So we'll have um, like in, in Cleveland or wherever you live, because you live there, I might not be able to come there. You host the, the theater and talk to the people and open it up and let them in. Because I'm, you know, Do you know how many movie theaters there are in the United States? Well, I know that my kid's baseball field is right in front of one that shut down, but they're going to open it back up. So yeah, yeah, to answer your question, yes. And one of my college roommates owned a janitorial cleaning service, a wrestler. Um, <laughs> he, owned, he owned a theater janitorial service. And I'm like, What's, what? What is that? And he's like, you know how many movie theaters there are? He's a real freak. And yeah. He's like, you know how many movie theaters there are? And he's like a high school principal now. Um <laughs> stressful but do you know how many movie theaters there are? there's tons of them and i'm like i never thought about it but like, really that was, yeah yeah so what i will do is i have basically it's like a, going on a rock tour so they're coming to this city they're coming to this city they're coming, but it'll be with the film because like i said this is for wrestlers man it's open to anybody but i'm making a film for wrestlers yeah you know what i mean so hopefully one day they say that's the best wrestling movie i've ever seen that's what that's the goal that's the goal is it to never be mentioned besides this interview ever in the same sentence again with one more shot <laughs> you know i'm going to try to find it now too uh, and i'm going to watch the whole I mean, thing hopefully you don't find it but uh okay. <laughs> so pacific northwest right like i think you've thoroughly figured that out right yeah what, what's your favorite part about living in the pacific northwest and and the state, the great state of Washington, right there on the the edge of uh, Puget Sound, the Olympic Peninsula, obviously the Pacific Ocean, Seattle, just up the road from you. What's yeah. your SeaTac? SeaTac's the airport, right? Yes, sir. And what's the closest big mountain to you? Is it Rainier? Uh, actually, well, I think I'm closer to the Cascades. You're probably closer. I live, to the I live in Ruston. Okay. Down by the waterfront. Okay. Oh, hey, nice. Yeah. Except for when tsunamis happen. Yeah, exactly. And they keep saying it's going to happen. But evacu it evacuation, the tsunami evacuation routes near you? Uh, we do. And we have that big alarm. They tested it before. It's loud, man. It's really um, hard to get in that far where you guys are, though, because it's got to go through the sound and there's all those islands that break I'm, up. Yeah, I'm pretty close. Listen, I'm knocking on wood that you're good, okay? Yeah, yeah. At least let me get the film done first. Yes. Well, no, I want you to live a long, prosperous life. It looks like you're going to live to be about 120. I'm not gonna lie to you. You look you look pretty pretty freaking Thank good. Thank Tell you. I appreciate that. Part about the Pacific Northwest and 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 why I I mean a Midwesterner like me is so drawn to it. So the reason why I like the Pacific Northwest so much is that there's so much outdoor activity. So I I have a I like to ride mountain bikes. So I have like three bikes. I have a road bike, a gravel bike, and a really nice mountain bike. And you can go. There's so many trails, man. There's so many places to hike. There's so many places to camp. I mean. This it's just so much going on in the area where I live. Um, of course, it has its bad areas, uh, but you just kind of stay away from that stuff. But there's some really good areas. I love also love the uh, structure of the houses that they have here. They have some really cool houses, and now that they're developing some really modern houses, um, because I like architecture and stuff like that. Um, I just like I just love it, man. Born and raised. I love the air. I love when that smell comes off the ocean by my by my place. You know, it's just I just love that feeling. I love getting off the plane, whether it's SeaTac or PDX, Portland. Um, I normally get like there's like a pine smell in the air because there's so many different um, you know pines and needle trees and pine. You know, just like and they're gigantic dug firs and the cedar and all those different things it's like you get out in the countryside and you're like wow and those yeah. seeds, i know they're in a rough uh spot right now as far as seattle and portland but those cities will bounce back in my opinion yeah. so i know that they they're having some issues with um there's large homeless populations yeah it's really bad i think that they'll bounce back in my opinion and i think they're some of the most beautiful cities on the planet earth and then i mean that's and listen i've been to some so I've been to some cities. I'm telling you, I've been to some cities across the globe. Mm -hmm. And I will take the Pacific Northwest cities over any of those other cities, man. It's it's just, it's, yeah. it's nature runs into a, a gigantic um, metropolitan area. And it's just, 
it's what you would expect and, and they do a pretty good job with it but i love going out there man listen if i get to uh you know spring break man i might be out there calling some uh i some hope so movie matches right yeah i've been looking for a guy it's like good. i just been looking for a guy good need a and guy you'll be just fine you'll be just fine perfect um so if you have to wear a Rainier's hat or something, you can't wear it. I will, listen, I will, <laughs> I will come out and for shooting, I will throw a Rainier hat on on set. And, um, but otherwise I normally like to rock the Wahoo and travel with the Wahoo. Um, yeah. That's just how I roll. But um, road construction, how long have you been doing road construction? 37 years. <laughs> it's time, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm so good. You know what I mean? What's I mean, that? I, I just, well, you know, you yeah. know, the experience. I mean, I started off shoveling. You know, then I just kept moving up and became a roller guy, a raker guy, running the street, CDL, driving dump trucks, laying out roads, laying out parking lots, seal coat and stri- I mean, the list goes on, extruded curbing, done all that. Yeah. I got, I used to get beat up. Um, the Bergmans were all wrestlers. I was telling you the Bergmans owned the, uh, the uh, uh, paving company in Genoa, Ohio. And, um, one he just passed away. His name was John Bergman. John Bergman beat me and he hit me in the face with a weed whacker one day after work. <laughs> then he proceeded to slap me around, and I was like, "Dude, I didn't even." Uh, but just asked him how his day was. It's literally it. Yeah. Must have been having a bad day, and I'm sure you've been there where you've wanted to beat some smart Alex. Oh, you know, I got it. I got it. He he gave me. It. I I don't. Have you ever got it? Have you ever gotten a uh, an asphalt beating? Have you ever gotten beat up at work? Uh, no. So I was a lot different. <laughs> back then um i was i was i was really strong you yeah know I mean? and so i was i was the guy that always you know because back then we didn't have guns you know if you want you got a problem with somebody be like okay after school we're going to go in this alley and we're going to figure this out you know either you're going to be done or i'm going to be whatever so i kind of grew up like you know fist man we just we we didn't do all that talking <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. wasn't like that. Let's get down. Let's do it. Yeah. So I didn't really have that problem because uh, people knew that I was serious and, you know, I, I would handle my business and I was pretty good with those things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just like a teenage kid that some like 40 year old guy beat up though. That's what oh. the big difference. 40 year old guy who just been yeah, driving yeah, yeah, yeah. all yeah. day was weed whacking. Hit yeah. me in the, face with the weed whacker unprovoked. Unprovoked. Yeah. It was, it was odd, but it, I tell the story. I told you his nephew was a NCAA finalist for Ohio State, J.D. Bergman. He was in Foxcatcher. Um, yeah. He was at one of the wrestlers in Foxcatcher. Um, so are you talking about the documentary or the movie? The movie. Foxcatcher, okay. the movie okay. with like okay. Channing Tatum and Ruffalo. He oh, was, yeah, yeah. That was a good movie, though. Yeah, he was in that scene and um, the, the, one of the wrestling scenes. And um, that was his uncle who <laughs> beat me up with the weed whacker one day after work. Uh, so, you know, I listen, I, I wouldn't That's mind so a fight, you know, but I wasn't really going to fight back and the guy could barely walk. It was, it was a rough day at work. You know, I mean, that's why I don't ever want to do uh paving ever again. Yeah. But see back then at, if, when I was that age, if it was a 40 year old or something, you just didn't talk back. I wasn't raised to talk back. Yeah. But I, but you, you're not, you're not, I, I, I didn't. Yeah. It was, unprovoked. You were unprovoked. <laughs> unprovoked. But I'm going to be honest with you. Every like beating that was provoked that I've 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 got I'll take I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll uh, yeah yep I, I had that one yep yeah yeah, I'll, yeah that, I had that coming <laughs> this one was unprovoked and the uh, J D Bergman thinks it's like the funniest story ever but um and John just passed away the guy who beat me up he just passed away he's a good guy yeah he's had a bad day man and it, and listen yeah. I know you've had a bad day on the roller on the maker, on the whatever man it's tough work. Yeah, but you know what though, man? Since I've been doing this movie, I've had better days. I've yeah. had it just because that's like the future, and I feel so good about just what's happening. It's exciting, so I've kind of just to, um, detached myself from heavy emotions at work, you know, because people are going to be miserable or do whatever they do or have an attitude, but I don't have to let that affect me. You know what I'm saying? So now it doesn't really affect me that much, man. Because I'm sitting there, go, okay, you're going to be doing this. When I'm going to be doing this movie, so I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm not feeling you right now because I'm feeling yep. pretty good, you know. I'm going to be over here touring the country, hanging out, <laughs> yeah. high fiving everybody. Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, it's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy I'm how it's, it's changing. Wrestling right now 
at this time is changing my life, man. It really it. is. And all the people that I'm meeting, including you, it's just it's just inviting and it gives you that sense of community. I just, I love it, man. You um, know, I love it. I I, I want to go and I, I want to screen. I want to go into the future and watch the movie. That's, uh, that's how fired up you got me, man. Yeah, you can watch uh, my other two films, though, on my website. How can, how can we, um, you know, link people up to you social media wise, um, website wise, and how do we get people to watch your uh, previous work? So you can go to rightnowtoday.org. And I have two films on there, Ship Paradigms about a homeless man, which I play the main character in that one. The second movie is the anti-bullying movie that I shot at uh, Stadium High School, which is really cool. Um, I show that at the Boys and Girls Club every year since 2016 for, uh, um, for the kids. And they just gave me a humanitarian award last year for that. And then the one, you. pardon me? Oh, thank you. And Trust Tomorrow was my first faith-based film and that's submitted to festivals right now, but you can see the trailer on my website. And on Twitter, it's uh, Greg underscore Marks. And on Instagram, it's Actor Marks. And on Facebook, it's Gregory Marks. Come find me. Come talk to me. Oh, wait. We forgot. We're going to talk uh, discussion. about... Discussion. Yeah. What is the What is your favorite wrestling movie and why? Okay. Of all the wrestling movies you've seen. I felt like the, the, the fox catcher... Channing Tatum as Mark Schultz and uh, Mark Ruffalo as Dave Schultz is the best version of a wrestling movie. And I felt like those guys, their body kinetics looked really good in the wrestling part. And, and I understand um, Steve Carell was John DuPont. He did yeah. his, listen, his performance. I remember seeing that guy. So I used to go to the world cups in the eighties and okay. John DuPont would be at him. And I was always like, what's the big deal with this? John? And I, I never understood the John DuPont dynamic of why, yeah. why is this guy involved in wrestling? And um, wrestling was susceptible to um, people with money then being, you know, given large influences if they, you know, cause it was a, uh, now these guys can make six figures. Jordan Burroughs does well. He can raise his family of four. Um, then they didn't do well. So yeah. they had to follow with the whims of these rich maniacs. Mm -hmm. never understood that and i remember seeing the guy and i'm like i don't get it <laughs> right so you gotta understand like a lot of those guys i saw mark schultz i saw john smith and dave schultz all lose at savage hall in oh, wow. ohio at the world cup what yeah 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 and i was a kid i was a boy and i remember this stuff vividly and i always talked to john smith about the time when he got beat at savage hall because I, I get to talk to him periodically yeah um, Look, I get to interview him and you can talk to him. He's a nice, he's an approachable guy. And yeah, I was like, um, him and his brother are arguing back and him and Leroy uh, Smith are arguing. And I remember he was like, uh, handing him an Ohio state hat to sign and he, and he went to Oklahoma state. Oh, wow. He, he signed it anyway. And he handed it back. He said, wrong OSU. <laughs> he got a little accent. Yeah. You gotta understand. Like I lived and I, um, I, I remember Dave Schultz. I remember everything about Dave Schultz. I remember being a little boy watching Dave Schultz win the Olympic gold medal when I was five years old, brother win. So I remember those guys and I remember seeing them in person. And then the actors, I just, I think Channing Tatum did an excellent yeah. job. Yeah. I just, that, I mean, those, the Steve Carell performance, unfortunately, but fortunately um, was super powerful. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, well, I hope that uh, your your followers chime in, and yeah. and because I just want to know this is part of my research, and I just want to know like you know what movie and why what you know because it, it it helps me because I've seen almost all of them, you know the thirteen. But, one more I'm shot, watching. Greg. All but one more shot, Greg. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm gonna watch that tonight. I'm gonna, as soon as we get done, I'm gonna try to find it, man. I'm telling you. I hope not. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. So let's take the bias out of it um what's your favorite wrestling movie and why greg um westbrook because it's my film okay i, I <laughs> kidding, the question. Take, the, take the bias out of it but I'm you know kidding. I'm kidding. that's your answer i can't um, i can't make you give a different answer yeah what's the one we were talking about with the as uh, a win-win with uh paul giamatti uh, yeah, I, I really like that one. That I really did really like good. that one. 
I really did like that movie. Yeah. I thought that kid was a good wrestler and uh, the New acting Jersey was State good. Champ. New, Alex yeah. was a New Jersey State champ. That was yeah. all I get. Um, he was the I real. I didn't know that until he told me that. Yeah. Did you Did you look it up? No, not yet. I'm oh, still, it's I'm the real deal. It. He's the yeah. real deal. And he's a, yeah, a win-win's a great movie. Yeah. Great I like his acting, though. I yeah. really did. Um, but that's probably one of my better ones. I liked also, too, um, that's a uh, fiction or fictional one, The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Yes. I like that movie, too. Okay. So that is so dark, though. I mean, so dark. Well, I, I like it because it was him. Yes. You know what I mean? Because he's a good actor, man. Yeah, he is. Um, but such a dark film, man. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, that that is that is. He goes to some dark spots there, doesn't he? Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's hard to, I appreciate it for the acting, I guess. Yeah. So I have a different lens on when I'm watching it. Yeah. But to dig deep and getting that part like that, man, and, and, and getting shaped like that. Yeah. Well, I know. mean, think about Steve Carell in, in, as DuPont in, in yeah. Fox. Yeah. So those guys went to really dark places for that. Yeah. Like I put those, I put those a, a step below or at how Heath Ledger immersed himself. Yes, yes. I think. Yes. So, yeah. I, I But you got to understand, once again, layman, film guy. I just, this is just me, you know, at 35. I like to know. I like to hear that stuff. And it, it helps. The more information I can get, the better I can film I can make. So that's why I said I'm always listening. I'm always wondering. I'm, I'm I, I, I'm so interested in wrestling. You know, I was when I used to wrestle too. Um, the reason why I quit wrestling because I almost cut this arm off right here because of wrestling. So yeah, the kid in school was bigger than me and he could never pin me. And he couldn't understand it because he wrestled for years and I only wrestled a couple of years, and, but he couldn't pin me. So he'd always mess with me in the hallways. And one, one day he came up behind, I dropped down, turned around and picked him up. I said, hey man, stop messing with me. You know, he's like, oh, whatever. You know, I had my little all-star bag, <laughs> you know, the little gym bag, remember those? Yeah. And I'm walking down the hall and the guy comes down and grabs me again from behind and picks me up while I slipped it because I just popped my arms up like this and slipped it, right? And then when I turned around, I grabbed his wrist and I swung him like this and then he reversed it and I ended up swinging into a big glass window. And when I went like this, a piece of glass went in my arm right here and came out my back right here and I pulled away and it just sliced it. Oh. That was the end of my athletic career ever. Okay, huh? Yeah. It looked like, a, you know, you break a chicken leg away from the, yeah. it looked like that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, 300 and something stitches, man. You're still here, though. Yes, I am. Listen, I'll take it. I'm just glad you're still here. Wow. That ended my everything because I played football, baseball, basketball. I played everything. Wow. Holy smokes. Yeah. I, I got lots of stories, man. That's why I like making movies. I like it. Well, I like hearing your stories told. Um, all right. I appreciate you. I gotta, I gotta run here. Yep. I got some um, angry uh, guys. I gotta go talk here in the other room. My kids are getting a little rowdy. Okay. Um, I will probably call you and just catch up with you, and uh, we're gonna get this out there. Let people see it, Greg. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for the time. And um, we're going to get a discussion going about people's favorite uh, wrestling movies and why. And you can have uh, some more research. Thank you for the time, Greg Marks. And um, good luck to you moving forward. The movie is Westbrook. And we should see it sometime around 2024, right? Probably 2025. We're filming it 2024. Okay. So 2025, we can expect Westbrook. And uh, you got me excited about it, man. You got anything else for me? No, I just I just really appreciate it. and. Uh... We'll be talking soon, and uh, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you a lot, really. I appreciate it, Greg. Thanks for the time. All right, man. You have a good night.